Hello and welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Uh, we are going to continue on with what I said in the last video, the summer of Kickstarter. I've been getting a slew of games that I backed back in the fall and winter, and the latest one to arrive is Arkham Ritual by Ninja Star Games. Now, I have a bit of a history with this game, and it's, it's kind of my private shame. Many, many months ago, before their Kickstarter went live, uh, the Ninja Star Games was kind enough to send me a copy for review. And I fully intended to do a review for it. I played it a couple of times with a couple of different groups. And right when I was getting ready was when YouTube suspended my channel. My channel was gone. I couldn't really record. Uh, and, and it's sad to say, I kind of forgot about it. Uh, not the game, just about doing the review. We actually continued playing the game. But the review itself, I, I, I dropped the ball on that. So Ninja Star Games, if you're watching this, I do apologize. But I liked the game so much and felt so bad about it that I did fully back enough to get my own copy of the game, not just the prototype they sent me, because I loved it that much. Arkham Ritual is a small box game for two to seven players. I don't recommend it at the smaller player count. There are kind of adjustment rules. But this, this is a group game. This is, how many of you here have played Love Letter? All of you have. Everybody here has played Love Letter. I can almost get you, you in the back, raise your hand. I know you've played Love Letter. Everybody's played Love Letter. Love Letter has a million different variants. There's Batman Love Letter. There's Adventure Time Love Letter. There's Archer Love Letter. You name it. It's almost like Munchkin in that everybody's got their own version of Love Letter. And that's cool. The problem is, aside from a rule or two, they're all the same. This is not Love Letter, but it plays a lot like it. Uh, this is, I call this the anti-love letter or reverse love letter. Let me explain. As far as the game's components go, this is it. This little deck of cards. Uh, I know at least the Kickstarter version has 28 cards. You're not going to use all of them. You're going to kind of pick and choose, like characters. You're only going to actually have one character, but there are several to choose from. And you can do so randomly. You can do so by choice however you want to play. But you're going to have 22 cards in your deck. Now, when you start play, here's the fun little twist. Everybody sees your card except you. You stand like this with your card. You see the back. You don't know what you have. And your opponents do. And you have to decide whether you're going to trust them or not. Now, clearly, with a name like Arkham Ritual, the game is Cthulhu-themed, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I know Cthulhu can be a little divisive. People are kind of like, oh, there's so many Cthulhu games. And there are, and I love them all, because I love the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. So with that said, the basis of the game is that each round, you are performing a ritual to summon one of the old ones, like you do. And you're determining whether you survive the round with your sanity or not. The basic gist of the game involves the tools card, which are the bulk of your deck. Uh, there are two copies of each tool, and one is red, one is blue. If you are holding the blue one, and nobody else has the matching red one, you survive. If you have the red one, you lose sanity. If you have the blue one, but somebody has the matching blue one, you lose sanity. Okay, so that's the basic, but then you have other card types such as your characters. You have the Mad Professor, the Wary Student, the Cultist, the Investigator. Each one of these changes the game. For example, the Cultist completely flips the rules. If you have red, now you survive and the blues don't. Cool. You also have artifacts, uh, the, like the Elder Sign and the Gate. Those can change things. You have the old ones. If somebody discards an old one, the round is over no matter what. To give you kind of a basic breakdown of how a turn goes, um, I have my card. I don't know what I have. Everybody else does. I have to trust in my fellow players to tell me whether I have something good or something bad. This is not a game where you want to trust people, but you have to. So if it's my turn, if I'm the active player, I draw the top card of the deck and I get to see it. Okay, I have the candelabra. Okay, but it's blue. So I have to pass this face down 
to the person to my left, and I have to tell them whether or not they should trade cards. I don't have to be honest. So say I'm the person to the left, and somebody says, no, 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 Cranky, you want to get rid of that card and take the one that's, that, uh, that I'm handing you. you. Trust me. Do I trust them? Well, the person across the table is saying, no, 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 don't. Keep it. You've got a great card. Trust me, you'll be fine. Well, they want me to lose. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and discard this, and now I get to look at it because it's going to the discard pile. Hey, they were right. This is a bad card. I don't know what I have now, but I hope it's better. It's a little hard to explain. Um, I know this is kind of, it took us a little bit to really get the idea of it, but once we got it, we really liked this game. It, there was so much trust and betrayal, and that's, what's more fun than betraying your friends? I've said this before. So again, this is the kind of game that changes round to round, card to card, and that kind of adds to the fun, that it, it really adds to the chaos of the game. You're already trying to argue across the table whether you know to trust each other or not. You're, you're trying to figure out what card you have. That's where kind of the love letter comparison because you all of the discard cards are visible. So you're like, okay, I see there's the candelabra and the ritual dagger. So I know I don't have the, oh, but that's only the blue one. I could have the red ritual dagger. Everybody knows exactly what's in the deck and can count cards to figure out and try to deduce what they have. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, rounds are very quick. Games themselves are not too long. Uh, we played with a group of seven and we had an absolute blast. Uh, I've played with smaller groups. Uh, the smallest I've played with was a group of four and that was still a lot of fun, but the higher player count, the better. We really liked the game at seven. So as I said, Arkham Ritual just fulfilled from Kickstarter, so it's not available in stores yet, but it should be soon. You may be able to get it on Amazon uh, or cool stuff, I'm not sure, but I know it's coming soon and I highly recommend this game. Uh, it was a very cheap Kickstarter to get the game, it was only, I think, $10, and this I think this will replace Love Letter in your quickie party game collection. Uh, I know it has for me, uh, it's just there's more... There's more interaction, there's more going on, and I, I like betraying my friends. I, I'm a horrible person. I, I like games of deception and lies, and this does it for me. This scratches that itch a lot, so. All right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you do check out Arkham Ritual. Uh, if you like my videos, you wanna check out more of them, please do check out my website, thecrankyoldgamer.com. Uh, and if you like pictures and stuff, uh, check out my Instagram. It is, of course, The Cranky Old Gamer. And if you like my channel and you want to see me grow, uh, you want to see me get better equipment, more games to review, things like that, please do consider donating my Patreon. All donors get their names in the credits. And the actual link to the Patreon is at the end of the credits. So, all right, guys, once again, this has been Arkham Ritual. We'll see you later.